Hello, everyone. Welcome to the online Saturday Reflection of Epworth United Methodist Church here in Marion, Ohio. I'm Reverend Jennifer Bass, and today we offer a brief online reflection so that you and I can spend just a few moments together reflecting on this day of waiting and watching for Jesus' resurrection. The day between Christ's crucifixion and his resurrection would have been a day of heartbreak and despair as the disciples all those many years ago sought to understand what had happened at the cross. There's no way on that first day after Jesus' death, while Jesus lay dead in the grave, that his friends and loved ones could have begun to understand what God had accomplished by Jesus giving his life for us and all that it would mean when Jesus would arise from the dead on the next morning, Easter morning. The only scripture passage that mentions what occurred on Holy Saturday is found in Matthew chapter 27, verses 62 to 66. So I invite you to hear these words. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. We understand that the disciples had all dispersed when Jesus had been arrested, and they spent the following day, that first Saturday, hiding. They were afraid that they would also be arrested. After sundown on Friday, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to ask for a Roman guard of soldiers to watch Jesus' tomb. They remembered that Jesus had said he would rise again in three days, and they wanted to prevent the disciples from stealing the body. Now, you and I know that even with Roman guards at the tomb, Jesus rose from the dead anyway by the power of God. The women came and visited the tomb on the first day of the week, Sunday morning, and the women found the tomb empty. Jesus would rise from the dead. Did you know that the Orthodox Church calls this day, Holy Saturday, the Blessed Sabbath? Scholars say that by using this title, the Orthodox Church links Holy Saturday with the creative act of God. In the initial count of creation in the book of Genesis, God made humankind in God's own image. And to be the people that God made us to be, we were meant to, to live in constant communion with the source and dynamic power of that image. We were meant to live in communion with our loving God. But we chose sin and selfishness, and we suffered separation from God as a consequence. Here on Holy Saturday, Jesus, the Son of God, through whom all things were created, has finished his work on the cross and has restored humankind to communion with God. Jesus has redeemed all of creation by giving his life for us and paying for our sins. His work is finished, as he said on the cross. And in the morning, God will raise him to life again, defeating sin and death forever. So on this blessed Sabbath, Jesus rests from his work. At least that's one way of thinking about it. That's one way that the Orthodox Church conceptualizes what happens on Holy Saturday. But for certain, on this day we are certainly invited to a profound silence and waiting as the Son of God laid buried in a borrowed tomb. That's all we can perceive on this side of Easter. Tomorrow we will proclaim Christ's total victory over sin and death. But for today, 
We speak from the heartbreak of death as we humans know it and as the very Son of God experienced it. It's extremely hard to wait on this side of Easter, isn't it? We who long to see our loved ones can certainly uh, imagine just how anguished the disciples and Jesus' family were on the day after Jesus' crucifixion. We who, who have lost our loved ones and we long to see them in heaven, I mean. Even if the disciples could remember that Jesus had promised that he would rise again on the third day. And I wonder if that promise was anywhere in the forefront of their minds. Maybe it was not. I would wager that the shock and grief over what had happened to Jesus was very overwhelming. But you and I know that on the other side of this day of waiting would come Easter morning and the miraculous resurrection of Jesus from the dead as God demonstrated what God's power can do. The disciples didn't know it yet, but they would see Jesus alive again. They just needed to wait a little while longer. Friends, as we prepare for Easter Sunday tomorrow morning, I remind us of the hope that you and I have because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Easter is coming in just a few short hours. I invite us to pray together today. Lord, today all is silent. You have given your precious life for the salvation of the world by dying on a cross. You died and poured out all mercy from your wounds. And on Holy Saturday, you rest in peace in the tomb as soldiers keep vigil. Lord, may we also keep vigil with you as you sleep in peace. We know that this day ends with your glorious triumph and your victory over sin and death, which is final and complete and forever. But for now, we sit quietly and we mourn all human loss, brokenness, and death, and we grieve your death upon the cross to pay for it and redeem it all completely. Help us, dear Lord, to anticipate the glory of new life that we will celebrate with your resurrection in the morning. Fill us with hope as we wait. We entrust our lives to your eternal care, your constant provision, and we are grateful for everything that you have done for us. You are glorious and you bring the greatest good in everything. May our waiting on this day of rest be holy. We pray in your name. Amen. Dear friends, I invite you to go in peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>